Now in this video, I am going to take a closer look at Mike Mahoney's Halloween kit produced by Carter and Son Tools. Please contact me and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Okay, the Mike Mahoney Halloween kit review. Well, I have spent uh, almost a week with this tool. Okay, I've put it through its paces. I've, I've turned a piece in this video. So please enjoy this video. I think this is a, a very, very well-made tool. It has a lot of value. And uh, anyway, let's get into it and I'll, I'll show you some more detail on the uh, components of this tool. Hello once again, this is Sam in Montana. Today I'm going to take a look at the Mike Mahoney Halloween kit. I'm going to do a review. I'm going to put it through its paces. I'm going to find a nice piece of wood to do some hollowing. But first, I'm going to unbox this tool and take a look and see what's inside. All right, I'm excited to take a look inside this box. Okay, the Mahoney Halloween kit. Let's take a look. All right, now let's see. I'll give you a, a little peek right here. Well boxed. I've received a number of tools over the years from Carter and Son in the the tools are always very well boxed. So here is the heart of the tool. The arm brace tool. The arm brace. Alright. Now we have two three-quarter inch in diameter hollowing tools. There is a straight tool and a bent tool. They call that the swan, swan neck tool. We have an adapter for for sharpening. Okay, very nice. Now, one point they make on the Carter & Son website is you can reuse this box for storing this tool and, and I think that's a, a very nice benefit. Let's take a look at the components of the Mike Mahoney hollowing kit. Okay, first of all we have the hollowing handle, the brace, Next we have the straight hollowing tool, the workhorse. This is the bent hollowing tool, the swan. This is the grinding fixture for the hollowing cutters. And I'll show you a little bit of this in action at my grinding center. We'll sharpen one of the cutters. Now, as a matter of comparison, I'm showing you all three of the cutters. So we have the teardrop cutter right here, the straight cutter with a swivel insert, and the radius cutter. Now let's take one of these cutters and take it over to the grinding center and sharpen it. Now I have the radius scraper tightened into the grinding fixture. I'm at my grinding center with the sharpening fixture. I've got a radius cutter locked in there and uh, let's do a little sharpening. Now I've got the, uh, the bevel darkened with some magic marker to make sure I'm set up. This is a 75 degree angle on this, uh, on this cutter. I just turn my wheel by hand to make sure I'm at the right angle. Okay, now after using this sharpening fixture a couple times, I am a big fan. It's well worth the time to screw your cutter into that fixture and uh, sharpen it properly. It doesn't take all that much time anyway, but then you get a perfect uh, bevel on that and what's important is the burr. Huh. 
All right, now let's take a look at the bevel here. So I've hit the cutting edge all the way around. I've created a little burr on that. Okay, now one thing I notice on this grinding fixture is the way this is profiled right in here on either side, that allows me to get um, all the way around on this radius cutter and and the fixture does not interfere with my grinding wheel so I can go all the way around on that side and all the way around on this side and that might be a better view of of how that uh, really wraps around the wheel without hitting it Okay, now for the main event, I've got a piece of box elder chucked up in my lathe. And down here, I usually leave a little bit of thickness to dampen vibration on the top part of my hollow form. This will be probably reduced by half as far as the diameter. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this out. I've got this marked with a piece of tape. And the bottom is right here, and I can use some of this wood down here for the depth if I need it later on. So I'm all locked in. The drill bit I've got is a Forstner bit. It's an inch and an eighth, and it's kind of a dedicated setup that I use for my hollow forms. Turn the speed down a little bit. I got the shape pretty much where I would like it. Okay, now I'm going to start out with the straight tool with the straight cutter chucked up into my brace. Now I've got the camera backed off so you can get a view of this uh, hollowing process. And I've got my cutter just a little bit above center line. Now I have done my share of hollowing. I freehand hollow and I've also got a captured system. This arm brace is to me the ultimate in freehand sharpening. It provides tremendous support and leverage and really does a great job in hollowing and really hogging out a lot of wood very quickly. Now I'm going to do my best to show you different views using this tool along with using various cutters. Around the opening of this vessel I do need to go to the swan tool to reach in underneath the rim. Okay, now I've adjusted my straight cutter so it's going forward just a little bit more in that direction rather than angled off. It's really aggressive. It takes off a lot of wood. So I'm working my way down through there. I can see that I'll probably need to get my swan neck tool right in here to reach this area. But I'm going to go a little bit further down there. I'm going to just take out maybe a, a two inch path all the way down through the center. Okay, now I've got my swan neck tool in my brace. 
and I've got the teardrop cutter installed in that swan. Now this particular cutter has a, a, a tighter radius and a radius that's not quite so tight. It's important that you rest the straight bar on your tool rest. Don't get it in here in that bent area. Your tool will twist on you. This is a pretty good view using the swan tool with the tool rest moved back. So I'm resting the tool on the straight part of the bar and I'm reaching an area that I just couldn't reach with the workhorse or the straight bar. Okay, now I'm aiming for a wall thickness of about a quarter of an inch down through here and I'm just about there. I want to come down to this area right in here with this teardrop scraper on my swan neck tool. And then I can go back to the straight cutter. Now I find that using a bent tool when hollowing is a difficult part of hollowing, but this setup with the arm brace makes it a lot easier to control. A little bit more speed. Now I've done a little bit of work off camera and I'm very close to my final wall thickness. However, you can't see what I'm doing, but I've got something that will remedy that. So now I'm at my bandsaw. I have my hollow form uh, in a clamp and it's all secure and safe. And I'm creating a window that you can see inside the vessel as I use these various tools from the Mahoney hollowing kit. Those clips will follow, so stay tuned. Okay, now the last cutter I would use is the radius cutter, which will help take away the tool marks on the inside, level off that surface. I'm turning about 800 RPM. Now hollowing takes a little bit of skill and some experience, so I would recommend if you're first starting out hollowing, start with a vessel with a wider opening and maybe a smaller one. And eventually you'll get the hang of it. What's important is in a system like this is to have the cutter right at center line or maybe a little bit above that. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see inside there, but uh, I'm really getting a pretty clean surface. I think my wall thickness is maybe three-eighths of an inch, maybe, maybe a half. So I'm going to do a little bit more work on that. Okay, now I took the time to finish the very bottom of this. My radius scraper was running into a ridge down there. And I got that all taken care of, so I'm going to do a little bit more with this. And I think we'll call it good. Now one more point I'll make here. As I approach the inside wall, I've got my uh, cutter angled just a little bit. When I first contact the wood, that makes it a little bit safer. Then if I want to, I can level that out. Makes it a little bit more aggressive. Well, that's a good look at the 
Mike Mahoney Halloween kit. Really, really nice. Big sturdy three quarter inch bar, a variety of cutters, and uh, yeah, let's take this off and take a look at it. Now I've done this before in another hollowing video I've got. That looks uh, kind of dangerous, but it's not too bad really. And I really wish you could see this surface. It's really clean. Okay, let's take a look here. My hollow form. Okay, now I've got you zoomed in as much as I can. And I want you to see that, that finished inside surface. It's really very clean. Uh, that's the cutter I would use to finish this operation. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Now, I spent some time with this tool, and it's really a very high-quality tool. I would highly recommend it if you're looking for a hollowing system. I've got many hollowing tools in my shop, which really cut down the learning curve for me uh, when using this particular hollowing kit. You know, it's designed by Mike Mahoney and uh, built by Carter & Son Tools. It doesn't get any better than that. So I would really recommend this tool. What's the value? Well, for $500, what do you get? You get a high quality tool. You get a couple three quarter inch bars for, for hollowing. It's really exceptional. In addition, you'll get a variety of cutters that will handle any hollowing need that you encounter. So if you have any questions, please contact me and I'll answer them. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video. Please subscribe and uh, share this video. And I would love to hear your comments about my video and this particular tool.